I get a lot of questions about the tools that I use, so I thought I would make a quick series of videos covering what I use, what I like about that tool, what I don't like about that tool, whether I've had any performance issues with it, and ultimately whether I would recommend buying it or not. I don't have any affiliation with any of the companies that made the tools that I use, no sponsorships or anything like that. So this is the first of three videos, and this one's going to be focusing on my cordless hand power tools. I'll include Amazon links to all of the tools that I talk about in the description box below this video, at least for the tools that are still available to buy, and they will be affiliate links, so if you click on something and buy something, then Amazon will pay me a few pennies which ultimately goes to help support this channel. This is the Bosch PSB 1800 Li2 cordless drill and it's a drill that I like so much that I ended up buying a second one. I tend to use one for drilling and one for countersinking and yes I know that countersink drill bits exist but from my experience they're pretty poor quality and the bits break very easily so I don't tend to use them anymore. And they do everything that you'd expect them to do. There's a first and a second gear on top. It's got a setting for driving screws, drilling or hammer drilling and it's got the usual torque setting as well and a keyless chuck. It's also got a battery level indicator and an LED light on the bottom. The LED light is really useful for when you're working in a situation with low light. These drills are part of the 18 volt lithium ion cordless range from Bosch. And the main reason that I really like this drill is because it's just really comfortable for me. I have fairly small hands and this is quite a small drill. It's got a rubberized texture around the handle so it's really comfortable to hold. It's not very heavy either and it just feels like a really good quality tool. And with the drills I've got one of Bosch's 1.5 amp batteries and one of their two amp batteries and these last for a very long time. Bosch makes higher capacity batteries than these but for the level of use that I give to these tools these batteries are absolutely fine. I bought the first one that came with the battery and the battery charger on Amazon and I think I paid about £90. The second one I bought as a bare tool on eBay and it was reconditioned and I think I paid about £30 for it and I bought the second battery on eBay too and I think I paid about £30 for that. The first one I've owned for probably two years now and I've had no issues with it and the second one I've probably had for a couple of months and I've had no issues with that either. I can't really think of anything negative to say about these drills. I like them a lot and I would recommend them. I've just had a quick look on Amazon and you can buy one of these drills with a battery at the moment for $77.99 or you can buy one with two batteries for $69.99. Really not sure why the one with two batteries is cheaper but that seems like a ridiculously good deal to me. Dylan I've just cleaned my workbench and now you've got your dirty paws all over it. The other cordless tools that I use are these Makita ones. I'll start with this one, this is the DTD152 Makita Impact Driver. I've only had this thing for a couple of months and the reason I bought it is because my previous impact driver, which was the Erbauer ERI6041, started making this strange chattering kind of noise and it wouldn't drive screws in anymore so I took that back to Screwfix for a refund. And I never had any complaints with the Erbauer until it started to fail but I didn't want a reoccurrence so I thought I would spend a bit more money and go for the Makita. The main reason that I chose the Makita over other brands is because I'd used one of these things before and I really liked it. One of the things that I really like about this is the distance between the chuck and the back of the tool. It measures about 135 millimeters, so it's really good for using when driving screws in really tight situations. This thing's also got an LED light on the front and a battery level indicator on the battery which you just press the button and it tells you how full it is. I haven't had any issues with it so far and I can't think of much else to say about it. It's an impact driver and it drives screws in very powerfully just like you'd expect it to. And shortly after buying this, I bought the circular saw in the same 18 volt lithium ion battery powered range. This is the DSS610. And as you can see, it runs off the same battery as the impact driver. I've only had this for about a month now and I think I've only used it on one project, which was the Cat House for two video. I'm pretty impressed with it so far. It cuts really cleanly. And that's with the stock blade, which is the Makita carbide tipped blade, and that's a 24 tooth blade. My first impressions with this tool, to be honest, were I was a little disappointed that the blade guard is plastic rather than metal. If you're using it outside on a concrete floor, 
you're going to be resting it on that blade guard quite a lot and I can just see it getting damaged. So I was a little bit disappointed with that. My other circular saw, which isn't a cordless one, as you can see has a metal blade guard. This thing also has an LED light. Obviously with it being a circular saw, you can adjust your cutting depth by moving the fence and locking down the switch there. That all feels pretty rigid and good quality. It has a cutting depth of up to 58 millimeters. You can also tilt the fence to cut up to 45 degrees. It came with one of those attachable side fence things that slot inside here and you can bolt it down using this knob, but I never use those things. And as you'd expect for a modern lithium ion cordless tool, it doesn't lack any power. The main reason for buying a cordless circular saw is because I use this thing outside a lot and it saves me having to run a power extension cable out there each time that I need to make a cut. And that means I'm probably going to be getting rid of my Bosch corded circular saw, which is a bit of a shame because I really like this thing. And one thing I've just noticed is that there's no riving knife on this saw. And as you can see here, the Bosch does have a riving knife. I'm not sure why they wouldn't have included one on the Makita. And it'll be interesting in future to find out if I have any issues with binding while making cuts. This is the Makita DBO-180 Cordless Random Orbit Sander. And I bought this recently because it's another tool that I use outside frequently, so it saves me the hassle of running a power line from the workshop into the garden. I bought it to replace my corded Makita sander, which is the BO-5021. And when you compare these two sanders side by side, I actually prefer the corded model. It's just a lot more comfortable to hold, and it also runs quicker on its top speed setting. But because of the added convenience of this one being cordless, I think I'm going to continue to use this one predominantly in the workshop. But having said that, I'm not quite ready to part with this one just yet, as I really like it. I bought this one on Amazon for £89, and the build quality is actually really nice, as you'd expect from Makita, and it is comfortable to use. One thing that I really like about the DBO-180 that the corded version doesn't have, however, is the stickiness of these Velcro pads. On the corded version, I actually bought a new Velcro pad to replace the old one, but it still doesn't hold onto the sanding discs very well at all. If you put a sanding disc on this one and remove it, there's no hope of reattaching it and reusing it later because it will just fly off. The new cordless one, however, really grips onto the sanding discs nicely and I've reattached them and reused them a couple of times without any issues. Generally I really like this sander so far but I do just wish it had a slightly higher speed setting. For my three Makita tools I have two of their 3 amp batteries and a charger. And that's it for my cordless hand power tools and if you're looking to start buying some cordless tools I would highly recommend trying to stick to one brand or one range of products that share the same batteries as it just makes life a hell of a lot easier. Obviously I didn't do that and that's why I'm using both Makita and Bosch batteries at the moment. Aside from the 18 volt tool ranges that are featured in this video which are the Makita LXT range and the Bosch Power For All range, I know that DeWalt also do their own range called FlexVolt and Ryobi also have their OnePlus system. But I can't comment on any of those tools as I've not used them. I hope that this video helps some of you, thanks for watching and more tool videos to follow.